Um, um, so it looks like we were talking about doing uh, the outline of the peacock uh, with the, the neon. Okay. And then we'll be doing a, a black vinyl sticker. Okay. Um, but then what we're also doing from what Mish told me is we're going to be painting the outline of the neon uh, black. So then it has that back uh, blue glow on to it. On the back side of it. Yeah, yeah. And you see that blue right there on the, the F for fart. Oh, yep. So that's going to be that's going to be the blue. That's argon in its raw form. We're going to have to put the transformer behind it. So it is going to okay. float off the wall like two inches. OK. Um, and then we will have a mount uh, that uh, the wire mount. OK. Um, unless if you want it to be hanging up above or behind. No, I would rather it. it yeah, I would rather it. it be floating. So then they'll, we'll just drill a hole in the acrylic. It'll shoot right back there. And so then all the wiring and everything will happen behind. Kind of similar to this, like how we have the whole drill, the whole uh, the wire going through. Right. But you it'll, guys will have the electrodes going through. It'll look a little bit cleaner. Yep. Yep. What's up, pupper? This is your surprise, by the way, that I've been talking about. We're doing a neon sign for the studio, um, but we were just talking about what neon is, like why it's so awesome, and like the difference between neon and what a lot of fake companies are doing now, which is like. Uh, LED neon. It's like pseudo neon, but it's actually using LED and not real neon. So I want you to like tell them a little bit about like what you were telling me about why neon is actually different and why it makes a difference to use real neon. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what I've described earlier was uh, what's happening inside the glass is there's the noble gas neon and they're actually being excited. You know, the molecules are being excited by electricity. So very similar, you know, I was describing that of like, you know, of a bar, you know, people go to the bar and they want to go have a good time. So one of the things about having neon in this place is it kind of sets the example of getting lit up. Right. So, you know, it's like an excitement that we feel that you can't really get from uh, that of LEDs. The LED is more of an artificial light. You know, there's no real backing to it, you know, like the, the rawness of neon. Right. So, uh, but what we're gonna be doing with your piece is not neon, we're gonna be using argon, which is one of the uh, noble gases, and it just produces a more of a blue light. Um, and those are the two colors, those are the two gases you use mostly almost every time in every neon uh, uh, sign. How do you get the, the colors that aren't red or blue? Uh, so there's actually a phosphorus coating inside the glass uh, to make uh, green, different types of blue, purple. Like if you wanted a, a certain type of purple, you know, you put blue in it. You know, blue in this glass and make purple. But if you put red in that same glass, it'll make like this kind of like hot flamingo pink kind of a thing. Gotcha. So you can kind of get fun with that kind of uh, color mixtures. That's the project. We're gonna go check out your studio. You said you have another place. Yep. So we're gonna go get some footage over there and show it to you. I know no beard on my face is really weird. This is the only time you're ever gonna see it. I'm, I'm shooting for that. I'm shooting for that kind of a beard right there. Anyways, we're gonna go check out the studio. So we're about to walk into the Snood Men studio uh, and we're starting it off really dope with some of the art that's out here. But let's check out what a neon studio looks like. Dude. These cool seating areas. See, stuff like this is so interesting. Yeah, dude. Like those spill pieces and stuff. That's so awesome. Oh, and then there's some people who do some, wow, these paintings are crazy. Yeah, so this is like the show I just had at the install, but like uh, all my friends are still off doing shit, so I still gotta have them pick up some of their stuff. Right. And you know, we've been doing like the, the virtual live streams in here as well, so this was our backdrop. It was like the, this meeting with the goddess, and so here she was, the storm, and- That's awesome. Got, like camera right here, DJ right there. That's awesome. And yeah, this is sweet. Yeah, we had like the, all the equipment space to do it, build anything and everything. Just being like the little meeting area, the table right here, the whiteboard, just go over all the shit. Dude, you guys just you guys just have everything you could possibly need <laughs> to like just any creative idea you get is possible here. Yeah. You yeah. guys can make it all happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. We uh, you know with the team, you know, we can do anything. I mean it's it's like it's like every kid's dream, quite honestly. You know? To experiment with things and then like just like it's funny, like we'll just set down something here, sit down something here, you know, from two different projects, and then like we'll come back to it and be like, whoa. That's like, dope together. Yeah. This? Yeah, dude. Dude. <laughs> dude. What is the story behind the actual Snood Man? Uh so uh Snoodman is uh Misha's character. Um 
You know, uh, as for her final, her final thesis back at ASU Sculpture, she did an installation where she obtained all that snood fur. So okay. Uh, that's a fur uh, that was part of a company that made these like weird like neck warmers, but there was just such a terrible size right. that they completely didn't sell them. Someone got fired. Yeah. Right. And there was a warehouse just full of them. So Mish somehow got uh, came around this and she bought a shitload of them. And then she made this character as well. And uh, part of her show, you know, the character was like, you know, she dressed this room and just filled it all with the fur. And like, there's a couch. And then that character, she made a mascot and someone was in it up against the wall. And until at some point during her, her critique, all of a sudden it came off the wall. And so it was Yo. about art being like more interactive, not being just about a painting on a wall, but you know, more of this experience arts installations like there's wonder spaces at yeah. fashions like a lot more interactive art spaces nowadays than i think we ever have and i'm not super into art like aware of what's going on in the scene mm -hmm. but um it i don't think i've ever seen this many interactive art spaces yeah. like even uh meow wolf and stuff like that you're like yep. holy crap yeah people yeah, doing some crazy stuff really pushing the the envelope yeah you know? and yeah. uh you know it's you know what better of a way you know to, than to be like entwined with the art to become yeah. a piece with the art yeah. you know and a lot of that came from you know the 60s you know uh you know contemporary art movement of uh uh yeah god i can't think of it right now but right. Uh, you know we just uh, where we're at today you know and the materials that we have today with those concepts we can really push the envelope and do that next new thing and yeah, yeah, yeah. as much as i can anything i can do to help support like the arizona arts yeah. community i'm all in for it so this is awesome thank you for having me come by and yeah, like, dude. i'm pumped for this piece Sick, pumped dude. to get this on the wall bro yeah.